now that this is completely on the core, everything is on the take-up roll. As you can see, it's nice and even. We have the weight on it. I've told the printer that it needs to enable the take-up roll, so it calculated the OMAS. You could actually see the little red dot blinking when it was moving forward to calibrate the step advance. I have the edge guards on because of the sort of undulating edges, curling edges that this fabric has. Um, I would say generally that is not ideal. You don't see that in too many fabrics. This fabric did not have a choice on the media locator. So we went on the media locator and looked and there's nothing for this particular fabric. So that gives you a couple options. You can choose generic textile, which was what I chose. So I picked 200% 16 pass. The generic 200% 16 pass, te pass textile is quite good. And I use it pretty widely with a lot of different fabrics. It gives you a nice beautiful print without a lot of fuss. That's always a good choice for me. I'm usually very happy with that. The other thing you could do is go onto the media locator and you could find something very, very close to what this material is. Or if you choose to and you have the equipment, you can build your own color work offline. Now you can't use the onboard equipment choosing fabric as an option because the color calibration and the ICC are gonna say NA, not applicable. You know, we had to kind of draw the line for the measurements for the ICC and the color calibration. We didn't feel they would be quite accurate enough using these soft textiles. And so we excluded that as an option. But this generic 200, very nice. For the most part, that's my go-to and I've been very pleased with it. So while it's printing here, I'm looking at it very carefully. I want to make sure that these edges and any sort of little rippling is not gonna be a problem. I'm watching carefully to see if it touches, if the print carriage touches the fabric at any point. If I run it for a while and I'm confident that everything's good, I'm generally gonna walk away from this. I don't do a lot of attended printing. These printers are designed to run very unattended provided you take the time and put everything on the rolls correctly. If everything is nice and even, easy, even on here, and you can see the nice smooth surface that you get, there's not gonna be any troubles. But if it's not put on the take-up roll correctly, or it's on the core irregularly, or something like that, usually it's sort of a human error kind of thing with most of the problems with the mechanical feeding of soft textile. Everything appears to be printing very nicely. Now, if something seemed a little off, like let's say this fabric was designed to run with the platen collectors, the ink collectors. I don't have them on here. I'm running this like it was, say, a 330. So it's just the flat part of the platen, your normal flat platen. In those cases, I would open this up, go to adjustments. Now, I can change the curing temperature here. I can change the vacuum and I can change the inner pass delay and the advance. If I felt that the vacuum was too high or too low and you had a lot of rippling or, and you know, it was holding so tight that the um, sort of the, the ribs from the platen were showing up too visibly, then I might want to release that vacuum a little bit. You want just enough vacuum so everything holds flat and passes through the print path. So you can always go while you're watching it and make these adjustments as needed to make some corrections. But looking at it print through here, I don't see any need for adjustments. Everything looks nice and straight. It's printing beautifully. I don't see any problems. One thing to be aware of while it's printing, if you're using the edge guards, is I will come back and check it from time to time and make sure those edge guards are right where they're supposed to be. Sometimes if the fabric tends to walk, because it's not always on the roll evenly, it may get inside or outside that edge guard too much. If it gets inside, what can happen is if it walks back, it'll kind of get caught on the edge guard. That's why I'm hesitant to use edge guards some of the time, because occasionally they create more problems on a fabric that tends to move on the roll than if they weren't there at all. But because of these edges, I'm tending to use them. But you can always kind of experiment while it's working. This is acting basically like a pause button here. So if I need to make some changes, I lift this, the carriage goes back, or if it were over here, wait till it goes back. And then I simply adjust my edge guard, shut this back down again. 
the new convection heaters come to temperature very quickly, you're not generally going to lose any prints. You will not even notice where that line stopped because the optimizer is holding everything together. Things don't migrate and bleed. On earlier generations of latex, if you lifted this, you'd have to undo the latch. The temperature would drop so precipitously and then take so long to come back up again that you could frequently see ink migration because as it just sits there, the ink is migrating out and bleeding and or causing image quality problems. With this new generation, that really doesn't happen. And then this acts kind of like your pause button. So this is fabric from inspection to loading to printing and then to general observations while it's printing, this is what I think is the best way to get effective results on a soft textile. And this is uh, one of the great virtues of the printer is its ability to print on all this wide variety of types of fabrics.